In the second tutorial today, we're going to continue understanding how networks of interconnected neurons interact to generate population dynamics. And we're going to extend uh, the networks we considered in the first tutorial uh, by adding a second population of neurons. So what we learned earlier is how to model, how to write the equation for a single population of neurons that we usually think have similar uh, properties. Um, for example, a population of excitatory neurons. Now we're going to study networks of interconnected populations of excitatory inhibitor neurons, um, as you might imagine, to be a more biologically realistic scenario because most neural networks um, in, in the brain, of course, have um, excitatory and inhibitory neurons. Today we're going to uh, define the concept of uh, phase planes and we're going to follow, very similar to the first tutorial, um, uh, similar terminology. We're going to begin by um, representing these networks in a schematic way, just like what we saw for a single population of neurons. So here we represent the population of excitatory neurons denoted here by the blue circles with RE and we denote the activity of the inhibitory neurons in red circles by Ri. These neurons are interconnected um, with um, uh, recurrent connections. So WEE denotes the strength of the connection of the excitatory population um, with itself. And uh, WEI, for instance, denotes the strength of the connection from the inhibitory to the excitatory population, and so on. So we use these subscripts to denote uh, what is the pre and what is the postsynaptic population. And the convention is usually that the first term in the subscript denotes the post and the uh, second subscript denotes the presynaptic population. So here WEI means that you go from uh, the connection goes from uh, the inhibitory to the excitatory population. So we can write equations that look very similar um, to the equation that we wrote down for the single population of neurons. So the same rate-based equations. Um, the difference now is, of course, that the two populations are coupled to each other, um, but we also have external input that could potentially be different across the two populations. So the goal of uh, the second tutorial is to investigate the dynamics of these networks using, again, the mathematical framework of dynamical systems. And because we now have two populations of neurons, we're going to be studying two-dimensional dynamical systems. We will find the steady states or the fixed points again of these dynamics and um, investigate their stability in uh, later parts of the tutorial. This framework of studying these coupled populations of excitatory and inhibitory neurons using rate-based uh, formalism is known as the Wilson-Cohen rate model and was developed by Wilson and Cohen in 1974. Let's write down the equations for this Wilson-Cohen system. So just like what we saw for the um, population of the single population of neurons, we can write uh, two equations that look very similar now for the two different populations. So notice that on the right hand side, we have the same structure of the equations. First, we have a leak term that tells us how in the absence or when a, a, in, external input is removed, how the excitatory or the inhibitory population will decay in time. The time constants of decay are determined by tau e and tau i, which could be different for the two populations. And the second term on the right-hand side of this equation, again, tells us how total synaptic input into each population is integrated through the nonlinearity or the fi curve of the two populations, denoted here by fe or fi which can be different for the two populations. Now notice that um, unlike what we saw for the population of um, single population of neurons, here the total synaptic current is a combination of the external input and also um, input that comes into each population from um, being interconnected with the other population as well. So here we use the minus side to denote that the input from the inhibitory population is uh, negative. So uh, let's investigate um, what the dynamics of these equations looks like. So remember, um, we already defined the concept of an FI curve when we studied the single population of neurons. Uh, 
the FI curve effectively gives us the nonlinearity or the firing rate versus input curve that tells us how each of the two populations integrates the combination of synaptic and um, external input to drive um, the activity of the corresponding population. So here we plot the firing rate as a function of input current for the two populations, for the excitatory population in blue and for the inhibitory population in red. These curves can be different. Um, and in this case, we have taken them to have slightly different gains, gains and very different thresholds um, and to both be described by sigmoids, just like what we saw in the first tutorial. But they can, of course, take very different shapes depending on the uh, system, neural system that you're trying to model. So just like what we saw earlier, we can plot now the activity of the two populations in time. So we can simulate numerically uh, these populations by starting with different initial conditions for each of the populations. And so later on in the notebook, you will have the opportunity to um, numerically uh, solve these differential equations. So to write the numerical procedure, the algorithm that allows you to generate these two curves and describe how they change as a function of time. So here we consider an initial condition where the excitatory population at time zero starts at a value of 0.32 and the inhibitory population starts at a value of 0.15. And we see that in both cases, for the two populations, the activity decays to zero over time. But now let's consider a slightly different condition, initial condition where the inhibitory population stays at the same value, but the excitatory population changes by a little bit. In this case, we see that the activity of the two populations um, evolves in time in a very different um, uh, trajectory and ends up converging to a very different steady state than for the original initial condition. So what goes on um, to properly or to um, really understand why these two different con initial conditions end up converging to different steady states it of course helps us to visualize this activity not in the activity versus time plane as we have shown here, but in the phase plane where we can plot the two populations against each other. So you probably recall the concept of the phase plane already from the um, network with a single population of neurons. There we also, uh, rather than plotting activity versus time, we could also plot um, the change in the activity, so dr dt, as a function of r. What we will do here is we will plot the two activities against each other. So we're going to visualize how the two activities uh, change in time by looking at the plane where on the x-axis we plot the excitatory, on the y-axis we plot the inhibitory activity. So in this case, we uh, for the two initial conditions, we also generate two trajectories. And if we follow these two trajectories from the starting point to each of the um, steady states where the activity converges, we can describe the change in the activity in a very similar way as we did with the activity versus time plane. Uh, we denote here the two trajectories with numbers uh, one and two. So in the case of one, the trajectories begin uh, with the initial condition uh, 0 0.32, 0 0.15, and we can follow the trajectory in the direction of the arrow to see that in time they will indeed converge to zero, zero. For the second trajectory, um, the initial conditions for the two populations is similar to the first one with only the excitatory one being slightly different. But again, if we follow this trajectory in the um, RE versus RI plane and follow the arrow, we see that the activity goes um, converges to a very different steady state. So in summary, what we have uh, learned today is how to extend the framework that we developed in the first tutorial, namely how to write down equations for uh, two coupled populations of neurons, excitatory and inhibitory, in a framework known as the wilson cohen rate model. In the notebook, in the tutorial, you will have the opportunity to uh, plot the activity of each population um, as a function of time, so in the activity versus time uh, plane and for different initial conditions. Then you will also have the chance to visualize these same trajectories in the phase plane, where rather than plotting activity versus time, you can plot activity against each other, so the excitatory against the inhibitory population, and you will see how the evolution of the trajectories depends on the different initial conditions. <laughs>